so leap with me yeah. into the 1970s yeah. then, when yeah. we have the almost paradoxical situation of women, uh, especially young women, deciding that even if they wanted to live with a male or a yeah. female companion, they didn't want to right. marry. They yeah. rejected marriage and fought for individual benefits, in mm -hmm. other words, to eliminate in so many ways the assumption that a male would be the breadwinner yes. of a family. So on the one hand, there is, I think you agree in the 1970s, a kind of massive rejection or a much larger rejection of marriage, a much greater acceptance of divorce, of having children out of wedlock. And yet, a decade later, we're into a period when gay and lesbian couples who had been unable to marry and was then mm -hmm. still unable to marry seek to become part of the marriage yes. bargain. How, how, how are we to understand yes. that? Well, I, I agree that the 1970s is, is really the nadir of marriage in, in terms of its uh, public face and uh, the extent of critique of marriage of alternatives such as open marriage, swinging couples, non-marriage, cohabitation, because of the sexual revolution, all of these things become possible and seem desirable. And only the oppressive and regulatory aspects of marriage in its history are emphasized. Not the citizenship part so much, but mm. the fact that marriage is a way that the state was governing couples, was prescribing roles, and was using it in punitive ways. And that it was, of course, unequal hierarchical and oppressive. But I think two things happened between the late 70s and, and the 90s. Two seemingly very opposite movements that paradoxically built toward a reevaluation, a revaluation of marriage. And that is, on the one hand, there was a tremendous reaction against the sexual revolution and all that came in its train by conservative Christians, often evangelical Christians, who built many institutions with names like Focus on the Family, the Moral Majority, starting in the late 70s, who rebuilt esteem for marriage from their conservative position. All of the values of fidelity and chastity before mm -hmm. marriage and husband and wifely devotion. So that was a, a conservative wing rebuilding of marriage values, including very old-fashioned values of subordination of the wife to her husband, but including a modern value of, of sexual fulfillment, as mm. if it were to be that much better when crowned by, um, by belief in God. And then on the other hand, gay and lesbian advocacy shifted a great deal after the immediate uh, period of gay liberation and coming out to various crises that occurred in the 80s with the AIDS crisis and many uh, mostly seemed to affect gay men at the time but then on the side of lesbians there were many lesbians who were in couples wanted to have babies uh, the the many changes of the 80s tended to lead toward more acceptance of gays and lesbians in the workforce in families in society in general and the exclusion from marriage for those who had now come out and were in couples seemed to stand as a really strong uh, way in which they were second-class citizens. This mm. important right and an institution that had been central in citizenship, they brought that back into understandings of marriage, the ways it is related to state approval as well as customary approval. And so the advocacy for marriage of same-sex couples began strongly in the 90s. And oddly, I think it is that plus the conservative wing, which these two sides were not in the least bit allied, but they each were, were building a new esteem for marriage and for what mm. it stood for as renovated, however, whichever group was supporting it uh, saw it. I think it was really the state benefits implied mm. in marriage. And there are many, certainly the 20th century built in repeated benefits for marriage, and then there were mimickings of that in private arrangements, health insurance policies mm -hmm. and so on that aren't state generated but mimic state benefits that were simply material benefits that gay and lesbian couples realized they were being deprived of in their partnerships. 
So as the state provided more and more benefits in some ways, I mean, even poor women, for example, who had been married and lived traditional lives mm -hmm. got better benefits. Pensions yeah. were better for those who had been married and yes. so on. Yes. So gay and lesbian couples wanted in. So would you, and this is a slight segue, but would you blame feminism or the reemergence of a second wave of mm -hmm. feminism in the 70s for the critique know, of marriage or, or the, the critique but also for the disruption of marriage bonds oh i think it was tremendously uh, full of impact yes but i think th there's the sexual revolution to think about and the sexual revolution was embraced by most feminists, I mean, certainly by all the radical feminists, but it wasn't literally caused by feminism. I, I, I don't think fe many right. parts of the feminist movement joined the sexual revolution, as did the New Left, etc. But the sexual revolution comes from many forces, including civil libertarians and anti-censorship folks. And so it has, the, the genesis of it was not single at all. Mm. And in that sense, I think the sexual revolution was a major factor in the breaking open of marriage and the critique of marriage. Just as insofar as there was a critique of marriage in the 20s and a move away from thinking it's the only way to live, the first wave of birth control and sexual revolution had a lot to do with that too. The fact that the condom became available in the 20s, women with, with some um, money and connections also could get diaphragms in mm -hmm. the 20s that that breaking of the expected necessity that if you were having sex, babies were going to result, breaking through that necessity, which really happened by the 20s for those who were savvy, uh, that did have a big impact on marriage. I, frankly, from what I've been doing in my research, I think adultery really blossomed in the 20s. Uh, <laughs> Uh, prostitution went down because more women who were not prostitutes but were willing to have sex outside of marriage with men of their own class uh, you know were available because of birth control and abortion so uh, I, I think actually there was a great deal more adultery from the 20s on mm. <laughs> but it uh, seemed to coexist with marriage so. right.